like the year-round autism justice campaign invented by Cassian Asumasu and Shalia Martin ask us, and ask ourselves, what would happen if we cooled down our rhetoric about autism and resisted opinions rooted in fear and loathing of autistic people? What would we learn about autistics and how would it change the way that autistic people are treated? I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome and autism spectrum disorder in 1992. And in the third grade, about four years after that diagnosis, I longed to be part of the gifted and talented program at school. They studied mythology, crafted dioramas, and built dodecahedrons and other nerdy fun. I longed to sculpt paper mache whatevers and build doohickeys, but instead, I had to attend what was unceremoniously called anger management. Once a week, I would sit with a child psychologist responsible for teaching me what to do when I felt overwhelmed. Mostly, we just read the book, Don't Feed the Monster on Tuesdays. At the end of each session, she would point to a chart of faces and challenge me to identify how each face was feeling. Eventually, I memorized the correct responses. Trying hard to be the holistic child, everyone seemed to think I should become. As I got older, I internalized this enforced separation and what I felt it signified about me. The other children, the ones who frolicked in the halls and built dodecahedrons, those were the good kids. I was the monster, out of control, isolated, and mysterious. School existed as a place for me to be fixed. But there was another way, guided in the wisdom of actual autistic people and able to cope with the real challenges that autistic people face without succumbing to pathologizing rhetoric about autism. What I wanted then and what I want now is autism neutrality. Autism neutrality moves away from negative depictions of autism towards a more realistic representation of our lives. Here are the three tenets of autism neutrality. One, autism is regular. It's not something to be fixed, simply one more way to exist in the world. Two, autistics are different from holistics, that's non-autistic people, and from one another. And three, all autistics are good autistics. And all autistics are experts in autism. If my teachers had have known the first tenet of autism neutrality, that autism is a regular way to live in the world, they would have looked upon my outbursts with compassion. I had real reasons to be upset. I was being bullied, the classroom was too loud, and we lingered too long on things that I had already mastered. But no one ever asked me why. Because to my teachers, my autism spectrum diagnosis was so alarming that I was barely worth the trouble. It's not hard to imagine where they got that information from. Autism advocacy organizations and depictions of autism in the media tend to frame autism in alarmist terms. Epidemic, meltdown, cure. Which is no surprise since so much so-called autism advocacy is undertaken without the input of anyone who's actually autistic. Which is probably why so much of what passes for autism awareness is really just a polite wash version of autism alarmism. Autism alarmism like all alarms, makes us feel tense and fearful. Autism alarmism makes holistics fear autistic people and autism, and in that one-dimensional view, keeps them from respecting autistic people. How does autism alarmism manifest? Well, one organization that claims to work on behalf of autistic adults reports that there is an autism tsunami and claims that four out of five autistic people are under the age of 22. In other major autism organizations, words like fix and cure appear throughout professional material, while models of leadership that center actual autistic people are notably absent. Why is it that autistic people can be institutionalized, shocked, and murdered, but not cared for, valued, or trusted. It's almost as if many autism advocacy organizations view autistic people as permanent children, 
incapable of representing ourselves. Luckily, there are groups and organizations of autistic adults working to change this narrative. Individuals like T.L. Lewis and Lydia Brown and organizations like Autism Self-Advocacy Network give new meaning to the slogan, nothing about us without us, which was revived in the 1990s by South African disability justice activists, by the way. But in a community in which it's estimated that one in four of us don't communicate verbally, I'm often asked, who am I to speak for all autistics? My answer to this is always the same. If the choice is an autistic person who has succeeded despite being challenged by an autism spectrum diagnosis, and a parent who has never had to personally grapple with autism in their own lives, the autistic is the best choice. And that's the second tenet of autism neutrality. All autistics are different. That doesn't mean that some of us are autistic and some of us aren't. And it's why the autistics say, if you've met one autistic, you've met one autistic. Still, there are real differences in power and privilege between autistics who are considered gifted or twice exceptional and those diagnosed with intellectual disabilities or forced into institutions such as prisons and hospitals. Autistic activists must listen and support the leadership of autistics with intellectual disabilities and people who want a cure and autistics who just don't love being autistic all the time. And that illustrates the third tenet of autism neutrality. All autistics are experts on autism. When we move away from autism alarmism toward autism neutrality, we can better support autistic adults without infantilization or fear. It also recognizes that actual autistic people are experts on autism and have a right to shape policy and medicine. Yes, it can be difficult to live with an autism spectrum diagnosis. I have difficulty with executive functioning. I have to rehearse every single conversation in my head before I have it. I can't always understand when someone is upset or sad or angry, and I still don't like hugs, although I may accept one. These are the things that make me autistic, but they're also the things that make me normal. We all have strengths and weaknesses. Autism neutrality helps us excavate those differences from the pile of anti-autism fear and panic that colors mainstream representations of autism. An autism spectrum diagnosis doesn't tell you anything about someone's potential for goodness or greatness. It merely tells you whether or not someone is autistic. Thank you. <laughs>